Hello opening nerds, welcome to Jan's opening clinic Season 20, episode 3 The show where we try to cure all your opening sword ailments One question at a time So without further ado Let's jump straight into the next question And that question comes from Skyvan Skian Skyyan? Skyyan. I'm gonna go with Skyyan. He's saying, Hi Jan, I've been playing this line against the King's Indian defense for a while now. And then he gives us 21 moves. I think it makes more sense to put the position on the board rather than reading it out. However, after I get to this position, I'm always skeptical, by the way, about such narratives, but I might be wrong that you constantly get a position after 21 moves. Anyway. We get it. I often begin to feel like my queenside counterplay is very slow and black now has the time to fully launch their kingside attack. I can relate. Um, at the very least, it seems easier to play black's position. Do you have any recommendations or guiding principles I should keep in mind when playing these positions for white? For instance, in what positions should I spend a tempo on h3 or king h1? Thanks in advance for your help and all the other chess work you do. Thank you. Skyan. And let's have a look at your line. Hmm. So good old King's Indian, short castles, bishop e2, e5, castles, knight to c6, t5, knight e7. Of course, all of this mainline King's Indian, knight e1, knight d7, knight d3, f5, bishop d2, a line that became sort of popular a couple of years ago. I'm not sure. How much en vogue it is these days. But Skyyan seems to be, sorry if I keep mispronouncing your username, seems to be very motivated to go for all this stuff. Black plays is typical King's Indian counterplay plan c5, knight to g6, h5, rook f7, bishop f8, in one order or another. The positive about the knight g6, rook f7, bishop f8 setup is it also defends these vulnerable spots on the king side, on the queen side. Knight g6, knight b5, rook f7, bishop a5, also theory. At some point, people got excited about b6, which seems to be more or less forced. C takes d, and now b a was considered to be a little too risky because of d takes c7, and these white pawns are very fast. However, black can and should recapture, as Skaya has also pointed out. And here he gives the move bishop b4, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. The problem is after bishop to f8, this is a move that black wants to play anyway, to cover d6 and also clear the seventh rank for this rook to do business. h5, rook g7 are the next two moves that black wants. And the white bishop on b4 really is not doing anything. It should, in my opinion. If we're playing this line, go all the way back to e1 to leave this square for the knight. So, answer number one. If you want to play this line, I would try to play bishop e1 here. I believe that's a more critical move. In his video series, Robin van Kampen gives a6, knight c3, and a5, which is a clever move, stopping knight before knight c6, I guess. And this is really the position where the current discussions are starting. I can't say that I've spent enough time to have a qualified opinion here. Like knight to b5, knight to f2, or bishop to f2. All seem to be playable moves. When it comes to what setup to play here, I honestly don't know. Like, I think there's no like unbreakable setup where you try to just, you know, eliminate all counterplay on the king side. I find these things tough to do, but here, I guess, you could make a case for putting the knight on f2 and then just trying to make it as hard as possible for the black player to break through with g4. However, I'm always nervous about such situations and I do agree with you that um, it seems easier to play with black. Also, white hasn't really reached all that much on the queen side. That's what bothers me about this line. There's, we're not even a pawn up. Normally, at least, you know, when I've grabbed a pawn or have something to look forward to. So these positions, I'm honestly not sure. As you can see, the engines normally they're quite happy here for white. I've always shied away from these things, but theoretically, 
my first input would be, if you want to play this line, don't play bishop to b4, play bishop to e1 immediately. I think that saves the tempo. In the line you gave bishop to b4, then bishop to f8, and rook to c6. I'm aware this has been played, but as mentioned, it doesn't make all that much sense to me, because this rook to c6, okay, maybe it's a net neutral, but it will also get kicked away after knight e8, bishop to d7. So I'm not sure what we've gained here. Was this the position you gave? a4, bishop, d7, rook c1, this was it, right? So yeah, I'm, well, I keep repeating myself. I don't think this bishop b4, rook c6 business has improved the chances to do stuff on the queens. And here after rook g7 or h5, yeah, I'd also take black. Hmm. Same story, more or less, if you try more defensive stance here, you really haven't achieved all that much. On the queen side, and the black counterplay is there. If you go h3, at any point really, then there's always the worry that it only makes things worse after the king side does get opened up. And also, it's hard to come up with the next move. Probably you would have to play knight f2 anyway. But yeah, I'm. Long story short, I'm not a giant fan of this line for white. If you want to play it, I think you should go bishop to e1. For me, all my life I've shied away from mainline King's Indian and especially these knight e1 lines because I'm too scared to get checkmated both after knight d3, bishop d2 and after bishop e3, f3. So if I end up in this position, I normally play knight b4 where, well, there's a lot of theory too, but normally you're not facing such a direct attack. Or if black goes for such a direct attack, he has to pay a pretty high price for it. But that's not a theoretical verdict, that's more personal preferences. When it comes to that line, yeah, I'm repeating myself. I'm not very qualified, but the place to look, in my opinion, is bishop to e1 back instead of bishop to b4 back all the way down the stretch. If not, you can always join Team Chicken. That after e5, we'll play a move like bishop to e3 or the thing we had, I think, last question, bishop e2, castles, bishop e3, you know, one of these systems that does not allow black and automatic kingside attack. Anyway, best of luck dealing with the king's Indian, something I've also not been too successful with over my long, illustrious, is that a word, chess career. Um, and yeah, maybe it was because I didn't dare to tackle these main lines. But I'm with you, I don't like them very much. Next question by Gustav Chatterjee. He's saying, hey Jan, so I have been following your black repertoire for quite some time. Flattered. I'm happy to play the Nimzo, but the Vienna has become a bit too suspect. Eh. And people know that I play it, so they play some bishop takes c4 line and all I can hope for is a draw. Yeah, I get your point. I would probably disagree that it's become too suspect. Caruana did score one and a half out of two out of his last two Vienna outings against Aronian. But of course, these bishop c4 lines are very dangerous. And if people are prepared for them, it won't be easy to get much of them. So I decided to learn the semi-slav for c6 as an alternative. Fair enough. But sometimes the Catalan causes me problems when I really need to win. Those are fairly common concerns for all of us black players against one d4 and I don't think it makes a difference if you play the Vienna or the Semislav when choosing Catalan movers. Anyway, so yeah, my question is what is the best move order to reach the Semislav and what are some of the main lines I should check so that I know at least the basic theory? Thanks. Mm, that's a lot of questions. Mm, anyway, Let's start with the move order situation. As usual, there is no right or wrong answer. There is just, you know, things to consider. So if you play knight f6, c4, e6, which is the main move order played at the highest level, then as you have mentioned, you have to live with the Nimzo, knight c3, bishop b4, and knight f3, d5, g3, the good old Catalan. Now, if you want to avoid that and still reach the semislav, which is the position after knight to c3, c6, there are two other options, of course. 
or maybe three other options. Of course, those having their own challenges. One is to play the Slav move order, c4, c6, knight f3, knight f6, and after knight to c3, you play e6. Or if white plays knight c3, knight to f6, e3, which is a move order I often play, you can also play e6 as a semi slav player, and after knight f3, knight bd7, you're back in your territory. Now, of course, this move order has its drawbacks as well, or yeah, lines that you might want to avoid. One of them, of course, is the good old exchange slav. Can be challenging if you're playing for a in a, if you're in a must win situation. The other is that after knight f3, knight f6, there are some slav sidelines that you have to deal with. For e3, and here, if you're trying to stick to semi slav territory, why there's some extra options like b3? So after e3, most people go bishop f5 or bishop g4. There's also the other sub branches of slav sidelines, like queen to b3, like queen to c2, like pawn to g3 here, and so on and so forth. But mainly, yeah, when playing for a win, the exchange slav is what turns a lot of people off. Then the last option that some exchange, some semi slav players like to dabble with is to play e6 and then to play c6 next move, the so-called triangle. I think Sopico did a video series on it. Knight c3, c6, and if white goes knight to f3 or e3, we're back in semi slav territory. Drawbacks of the triangle are, first of all, the martial gambit, leading to very sharp positions, but yeah, very challenging. This stuff, and then, once again, move order considerations. If you're trying to avoid the Catalan, white goes knight f3, black goes c6, let's say, because knight f6, g3, of course, we have the Catalan. There are some new sidelines that white can try, like knight b2, queen to c2, pawn to g3, stuff like that. So, there is no perfect answer. I, when I used to be a semi slav player, I was changing back and forth between knight f6, e6, and d5, c6, with the occasional d5, e6 thrown in to keep opponents off guard. But yeah, you just gotta be aware of what you're giving up. In a nutshell, if you only want to have one repertoire, I'd probably still go with d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, and I don't know. Try to find a sharpish line against the Catalan. I'm aware that's difficult. There should be four check or DC4 followed by A6. One of those. Mm. And then as for part two of the question, what are the main lines of the semi slav in this format? Or what are lines that you need to know? In this format, we won't have time to go into a lot of theory, but basically you need to make decisions what you want to do against Bishop G5. I mean, Black has a choice between dc4, e4, b5, the Botvinnik, which is a lot of theory, extremely sharp. Um, objectively should hold, but yeah, it's chaos. Um, or if you want to play h6, when after bishop h4, most people play dc, e4, g5, the so-called anti-Moscow. Also a lot of theory and extremely sharp, but arguably a better version of the Botvinnik. By going h6, you also allow, allow white the line that many players play nowadays, bishop f6, queen f6, followed by some move, the main line being e3, where white hopes to find a small edge in such positions, but black at least has the two bishops, so he can hope that in the distant future they'll be a factor. If you don't like any of those, you can always play the, whatever it's called, Cambridge Springs, knight b7, e3, queen a5, which also allows white to play some sort of Carlsbad structure like this. So those are the choices. Most semi slav players play h6 here, when you have to be ready for bishop h4 mainly, and have some basic concept of bishop f6. After e3, I'm assuming you want to play knight bd7. There's two main lines. One is queen to c2. Most people play bishop d6. And nowadays, bishop to d3 is the move you will by far meet the most often. People that want to avoid theory play b3, but there's not so much to know. But bishop d3, one needs to have a plan. Castles, castles, and there's many systems. e5, dc4 followed by e5, dc4 followed by b5. All of those are playable, and you have to choose one of those three. There's some sidelines here like g4 and whatnot, but not too critical. Other than that, there's bishop d3, when, in my opinion, black should take and play b5, so called Marin, when the main line is bishop d3, where once again, black has to make a choice between bishop to b7 
pawn to a6, and bishop to d6. All of those playable. So the good news is black has choices. The bad news is Semislav, you do need to work a lot of a lot on because the price of a move is very very high. Therefore, yeah, I've stopped playing it a while ago, not because I think it's bad, but yeah, because I I'm not active enough to stay up to date with all that stuff. And if I want to add another move in this position, I'd probably currently favor the Ragosin, as we've talked about many a time on this show, as an alternative to the Vienna. But nothing wrong with the Semislav, and best of luck mastering it. Hmm, what else do we have? Smashing Lad is saying, Hi Jan, love the new format. Thank you so much. Mm. Will someone be going back and timestamping seasons 1 to 18? I won't be doing it. Um, if there are any volunteers out here, let me know. But I guess it's unlikely to happen. The good news is, some of the questions are sometimes a bit repetitive. So the big topics, like what to do against the King's Gambit, or how do I play for a win against 1d4, I want a safe line that gives me good winning chances and has very little theory. They normally keep popping up once in a while. So we'll re be revisiting those. Anyway. And maybe create some sort of clip library. No, I'm not volunteering. That's too bad, smashing that. <clears throat> My move order type question. I'm considering investing many hundreds of hours mastering the nuances of the von Henning Shara Gambit. That's what it's called. D4, D5, C4, E6, Knight, C3, CD5, C5, CD5, CD4. Assuming I successfully become a leading world expert in that line and everyone subsequently starts going 3 Knight of 3 against me instead, what have I achieved? Thanks as ever, smashing lad. Hmm. That's a fair question, but I think you should first invest those hundreds of hours become the world's leading authority on the Shara Henning and then worry about the other issues. So the gambit you're mentioning is knight c3, c5, cd5, cd4, which I think is not terrible. Like normally I dislike all these shady gambits, but this one, it's a little shady, but not hopeless. You tends to come down to the same position against queen a4 and queen d4. The queen d4, it's knight c6, queen d1, e d, queen d5, bishop d7. I think bishop d7 is a tougher test than bishop e6. While after queen a4 check, bishop d7, don't play b5, b5 doesn't work. e d, queen d5, knight c6. You get this when, yeah, it's hard to believe that black is full compensation, but at least, you know, it can get messy. Stuff like bishop c5, e3, queen e7, tending long castles, followed by g5. And if white is unprepared, while well, you've invested many hundreds of hours. This year, it's not the worst surprise weapon in the world. Of course, there's more moves here, I guess. Now, queen b3 is maybe a little more challenging, and so on and so forth. There's also the option for party... What's the word? Party poopers? Can you say that? To not take the pawn. Play queen d3, something like that. Let's say this is a c3 Sicilian with colors reversed. We have an extra tempo. Very playable. So it's not exactly winning. But it's not, it's not that horrible. Now, I'm sure you knew all that because you are willing to invest these hundreds of hours. And your question is, what have I gained after knight f3? I guess not that much. But there are some purists like me who will normally blitz out knight c3. Because their point is that against knight f6 they can go c, d, e, d, bishop, g5. Play the Karlsbad structure. When in this Karlsbad structure, black can't comfortably develop his bishop c6, e3, bishop f5, there's queen f3. It's one problem. Well, if the pawn is already... Mm, sorry, if the knight is already on f3, that's not so great anymore. So you've achieved that, c, d, e, d, knight c3 we've ruled out because here we can develop our bishop either immediately or after bishop e7, followed by bishop f5, without running into that type of unpleasantness. Other than that, I guess you could build a repertoire around, well, if we ignore the dreaded Catalan that we had last question, 
around knight c3 and choose some goofy sideline here, like maybe c5. And once you become the world leading expert in the Shara Hennig and its cousin, the delayed Shara Hennig, stuff like this, you can face the future, maybe not with confidence, but at least with some type of repertoire. So things could be worse, no? I think if you combine your beautiful new Shara Hennig findings, I hope it's called Shara Hennig and I don't keep mispronouncing it. No, not mispronouncing, but missaying it. Bungling it. With this, maybe the semi tarash maybe CD5, CD4. Then these hundreds of hours might not be completely lost. Or you can, you know, take a page out of Kustav's playbook and start playing C6 here. Boom. So best of luck in your quest to become the world's leading authority on the Shara Hennig. And I hope we'll talk about the Shara Hennig in more detail once you're there. Maybe then you'll be sad that it's 0.65 in all the lines. Maybe not. Thanks and best of luck. Best of luck? Best of luck um, smashing lad. Momo is saying, hi Jan, what do you think about five bishop c5, c3 castles, d4, bishop a7 against the Rui Lopez? I couldn't find any advantage for white. Could it be used in correspondence chess? Thanks. My best guess is that Momo started paying attention to this line, like many others, me included, did when Magnus Carlsen used it to gain a very comfortable draw with the black pieces against Sergei Kayakin recently. Um, so let's put it on the board. a6, bishop a4, knight f6, castles, bishop to c5, pawn to c3. And here, yeah, the main lines used to be b5, when after bishop b3 we transpose to the, whatever it's called, Arkhangelsk, Yurtaev, and white has the extra option to play bishop c2, when black can play d5, and Stuff becomes very move by move-ish. However, Carlson instead of b5, played castles here. And after d4, he went bishop a7. When that game, he equalized quite comfortably after d takes e5. So you're saying you couldn't find any advantage for white. Can it be used in correspondence? I don't know, I've never played correspondence. The question that you have to figure out before using it in correspondence or anywhere is what do you want to do after bishop g5? I think that's the critical test. Very logical, now that this bishop is all the way on a7, can't help here anymore. White pins the horsey. Hell yeah, it's not a bad move. So this is the one that you would have to figure out. I'm not quite sure what black should be doing. After h6, bishop h4. <clears throat> what they normally do is play e takes d4 here. When there's some very weird, subtle stuff with queen to c1 directly against g5. That seems like white can just go cd4, because if black goes g5, which I guess they're afraid of, then knight takes g5, according to my humble computer. Seems to be good for white. h3, bishop g5, bishop takes d4, knight to c3. My computer is very excited for white here, so who am I to argue with him? d6, knight d5. This is just, yeah, seems to work for white, move by move. Therefore, if black can't go g5, he has to, you know, be a little more humble here. Play a move like d6. When, once again, according to my beloved engine, this is a bit better for white. Point being that still g5 apparently can be met with some violence like this. Knight f3 takes rook b1. And, you know, it works move by move. Therefore, yeah, you need to have a plan against this bishop g5 business. Maybe you can try to do without ed4, play d6, but it looks like then just pawn grabbery might more or less work. I don't know if such a position can be played. It's not the prettiest of pawn formations that we've ever seen, but black does have two bishops. 
So yeah, those are just some pointers. I'm not much of an expert in this castle's bishop to a7 line. But yeah, the big concern would be the move bishop to g5. And we'll see if people repeat it at the highest level or in correspondence chess or if it was a one game surprise weapon. Because if you see this for the first time, you or well, you haven't looked at it in years, you probably won't go for bishop g5s where you then have to figure out if you can sacrifice a piece on g5 in the near future or not. What Kayaking chose is of course very safe, but here it seemed like Carlson, armed with a new idea, managed to equalize quite comfortably. This bishop g4, bishop f5 computer line. So yeah, not sure. I could not find a convincing way to meet bishop g5, but I'd be curious to find out if there is one. Thanks for the question, Momo, or is it M0, M0? I'm gonna go with Momo. Ayan D, or Aryan. Mm -hmm. He's saying, hello, Jan. In the Petrov, e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6, d4, knight takes e4. He's using p. I'm guessing that's part. Part take, part mal Lope Lopa Deidri, part says s. No, it's not part. And bishop d3, knight c6 was introduced by Murray in his game against Timon in 1993. Time flies. Nowadays this is seldom played anymore and even now there seems to be a sort of Petrov revival at the top level. What is considered the most critical line or refutation after this move for knight to c6? The truth is I do not know. I think it's a decent move and I think that its lack of popularity has as much to do with the white choices and the alternatives to it as with its merit. I'm being a little cryptic, so let's let's put it on the board. So knight f3, knight to f6. Here, the line you mentioned is d4, knight takes e4, bishop to d3, knight to c6. Now, first of all, instead of d4, knight takes e5 is a lot more popular at the highest levels, but I'm guessing at all levels into here, whatever, knight c3, d3, d4, one of those moves. And secondly, after d4, knight takes e4 is the best move. Nowadays at the top level we've seen people play a lot of d takes e5, d5, knight bd2, but not that much bishop to d3. And then third, after bishop d3, d5, I'm not aware of a way white can try to fight for an edge here. It seems like d5 solves black's problems fairly well. Knight takes e5, knight d7, and this whole complex is quite well known and it seems like black is doing all right there. So they weren't particularly um, needing the move knight to c6. And since black seems to have two good options here, the white players have been avoiding this line. So that's my theory. Um, when it comes to knight c6, I think it's playable. I think there's nothing particularly wrong with it. The point of course is that after bishop takes e4, d5 wins the piece back after bishop to d3, e4, which equalizes. I used to think that bishop g5 here was dangerous for black when the main move is queen d6, but queen d6, d e, how does this go? Queen b4 check, knight c3, d takes e, a3. It does seem to be dangerous for black. Queen b2, knight d5, and stuff continues, but this is risky for black. So I thought that could be a problem, but after bishop g5, just queen to d7. Seems quite solid. Bishop d3, e4. Once again, black wins the pawn back, and he's not fatally behind in development, so something like this should equalize in the, in the long run, or well, the short run, some sort of run. So of course white has alternatives. D5, I'm guessing, is the most popular move. Well, knight C5 is the main line, but here, at least my computer on low depths. Depth, watch your th. Spits, spits, spits out some of those like short castle with weird positions. But there's also knight to F6, targeting this pawn, and after D takes C, same idea as knight C5. E4 wins the piece back. Here, once again, I'm not aware of a way for white to get an advantage. What they normally do is play this position. But it does look, oh sorry, not queen 7 bishop e7. It does look fairly equal to me. 
So to answer the question, I think knight c6, very playable. Like I could mention more lines, whatever. D takes e5, knight c5. Castles takes, takes d6. Or what else is there? Knight takes e5, knight takes e5. There should be four d5, all the stuff. I think it's all right. But white players don't really go here that much anymore. And after bishop d3, d5 also has a good reputation. So that's the reason for its decline in popularity, according to me. If there is a refutation, I don't know. Maybe people just feel d5 is fine and um, this position is a tad better for white. But it doesn't feel that scary. So I don't know, knight c6 is fine. Best of luck employing it, Aryan D. Turfan Fragment is saying, I am seeking out unbalanced positions on the black side of the Grunfeld, but get frustrated with the following. D4, Knight F6, C4, G6, G3, C6. Yeah, C6 doesn't really have unbalanced position written all over it, does it? Bishop G2, D5. Queen a4, knight ft7. So you're happy with bishop g2, d5, cd5, cd5? Queen a4 bothers you? Um, queen a4, knight ft7, cd, knight b6, queen d1, cd, knight f3, bishop g7, knight c3. Mm, am I wrong in claiming that this position is a bit boring? I don't know. Only... Only boring openings get bored? No, that doesn't make any sense. Is there something sharper I could have played earlier? Yes. Peter Svidler says that 5 knight ft7 is the best move at that juncture. But can you say why other moves are inferior? Wow, you're trying to <clears throat> make me go against Dr. Grunfeld? Professor Dr. Grunfeld, Peter Svidler here? Or no, you're just trying to get me to fill in the gaps. And as usual, it depends what level we're talking about and also what the plan is if we're trying to get iron-clad egality, or if we're trying to get an interesting position. Often, when you're black against a 1-t4 mainline, it's hard for those two to be the same thing. So let's go through it. d4, knight f6, c4, g3, g6, g3, c6. I've given this speech many times before on this show. In the interest of unbalanced positions, you can, of course, play King's Indian as well, you can go for the move c5, which Svidler recently, I think yesterday, just played against Gelfand, lost the game after dc5, but yeah, <clears throat> it gets certainly gets to interesting positions. Or you can also play some version of these, these positions, knight f3, knight b6, which are a little more unbalanced, even though I sort of understand why many Grunfeld players Apparently, including Svidler. Don't trust them that much because white does have more pawns in the center and all that. So after c6, bishop g2, d5, queen a4. Um, first, we'll put your line on the board. Yeah, knight f3, I don't know. Most players, I believe, go for knight c3 and then, sorry, knight c3. And then e3, knight e2, or knight h3. We had a question about this recently. Well, yeah. Hard to disagree that the line is quite symmetrical. So, as I said, it's a question. If we're fighting for equality, this could very well be Black's best bet if we're fighting for an enterprising position. It's probably not, not Black's best bet. When it comes to alternatives to knight fd7, dc4, I'm not very familiar with. I guess why it's supposed to be a little better here. But MVL recently played a line that maybe suits you. He played the move bishop to g7 here, sacrificing a pawn. Now, if that's not exciting and unbalanced, I don't know what is. Mm. So bishop g7, c takes d, he castled. Um, which, yeah, now c takes d5 is a threat, and queen a4 wouldn't have made any sense if black was allowed to play c d5 next. So white sort of has to take dc, knight to c6. And at least it's interesting. You, of course, are a pawn down, so you have to justify it. Knight to f3, MVL played knight to d5, intending to win the pawn back with knight b6, followed by knight takes d4. So the critical test is probably e3, here knight b6, queen d1, e5. You know, that's unbalanced. Mm -hmm. um, objectively, 
I haven't checked it very much, but it does seem to at least, yeah, come very close to equalizing. So it's certainly an idea worth keeping in mind, especially if knight ft7 bores you a bit too much. Even though, as I've stated, I'm not quite sure why you would find that position to be much more boring than this position, which is very symmetrical. Anyway, best of luck, and I hope, yeah, if you don't like c5, d5, or the king's Indian, then in this line, maybe you can get bishop g7, c takes d5, castles to work, and will thrill you a little more. Chess Orca, not a premium member, so I can't give him all my hot takes on the Evans Gambit. But Kramnik's student is, and he is wondering, hi Jan, what could be the reason why the below variation of the Berlinus, ah no, of the Berlin, is not played by many grandmasters? e4, a5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, knight f6, castles, knight e4, d4, knight d6, de, knight b5, a4. White keeps a lot more material on the board, and hence, can't we, ex can't we expect a much more complicated middle game? I don't know. As far as I know, that line doesn't have the reputation of leading to complicated middle game. I thought it's more used trying to force a draw, frankly. And I guess that's the reason why it's not that popular among Grandmasters, because more often than not, well, I can't, I can only speak for other Grandmasters here, not speaking for myself. More often than not, they are not trying to force a draw with the white pieces. And let me try to explain what I mean. So bishop b5, knight to f6, and the line you're giving is knight take castles, knight e4, d4, knight d6, d e5, knight takes b5, and a4. Which, you know, is funky the first time you see it, because the knight is trapped. However, the reason why I'm saying I think it's mainly used to try to force a draw, I believe people have nowadays agreed that knight bd4 is the best move. d6 is playable, but gives white some chances. So knight bd4. Knight takes d4, and here the simplest path is to just take on d4. d5 is also an interesting move. But uh, just take on d4, queen takes d4, and d5. Well, white has a choice. The most critical looking move is e takes d6. Black plays queen takes d6, and here the drawing line that I keep teasing is queen e4 check, queen e6, queen d4. When apparently black doesn't have anything better, is this it? Then going back with queen to d6, even though, you know, bishop e7, who knows. Um, so that's the most commonly played line I see. When I see this d e5, knight b5, a4 business, if white does not want that, he can, of course, choose not to play e d6, and sometimes this line is played with, I don't know, some of like knight to c3 here or queen to d3, but I'm not sure if this is our best bet of putting pressure on the Berlin. Black has a very solid structure. Black has the two bishops. Of course, white has some plans of his own. Queen to d3, f4, bishop e3, knight e2. But it's a reasonably simplified position where black's play does not seem to be that hard to me. So that, I believe, is the reason why this line is a little out of fashion. Queen d3, queen d7 is interesting, or just g6. And yeah, that's that's the problem. You have a beautiful idea like d e5 followed by a4, which seems to lead to an exciting game. But people and their evil computers, especially if it's not a surprise, they can often dumb these down to less exciting games. And this one, I don't think it's currently considered to be a very promising try. Things might change, but I'd be surprised if this line would cause the Berlin all kinds of trouble. Thanks for your question, Kramnik student. Berlin, still not refuted. Non-adjusted alpha is saying, Hi Jan, I have a question regarding the Slav. In my repertoire, I am following from the white side Avro's recommendation from his very nice 1t4 repertoire book. With d4, t5, c4, c6, knight f3, knight f6, e3, bishop g4, queen b3, queen b6, knight c3, e6, knight h4, bishop h5, h3, with the idea g4 next, and so on. I had good results in over the board play on club level, ELO 1800 
to 2200 in terms of opening advantage. My question for you, as the Avro, Avro book may already be slightly outdated, what is the current standing of the opening theory here and is there a clear equalizer in this line? Thank you very much for your efforts. C24 is a great platform to enjoy the game of chess. Thank you, non-adjusted alpha. Mm. Let's enjoy the Slav defense of chess and see what we can do about that line. I never know the state of current theory because I struggle with like the concept of what current theory is. Um, but I'll give my opinions. So hopefully those reflect the state of current theory. So e3, currently I have a feeling that people are moving a little back from bishop to g4 and more towards bishop f5. These things go a little back and forth. Bishop g4, of course, very, very playable as well. But it feels to me like bishop f5 currently is a little more popular. So bishop g4, white is a choice between h3 and your line queen to b3, queen to b6, knight to c3 e6 and knight h4 which yeah look very goofy when i first hit the scene but it makes perfect sense why it wants to you know just grab the two bishops with h3 and g4 bishop h5 h3 and here black faces a choice i still think it's a playable line for white i'm not sure it gives you an opening advantage but i do think it's playable so what can i do i can we can go through the lines that black has here g5 when i think it's been established that g4 is nothing so white goes knight f3 h6 the point is to secure the g6 square for the bishop but of course we had to weaken our king side to do so c5 i think is the latest outing i'm not sure what avro gives for white here c5 queen c7 bishop d3 and now rook g8 in order to put this bishop on g6 with you know complicated position is this the game karana mamedyarov um, rook g8, queen c2, knight bd7. I think this is the game. b4, bishop e7, bishop b2. Here, Mavidyarov went g4, which was a little aggressive. But after bishop to g6, you know, it seemed playable for black. Even though white also does have hope to maintain advantage. So not a reason to abandon this line. And g5, of course, is a very committal move. Um... At some point, people thought this was the solution to everything. The tactical point being that c takes d5, knight b4 is good. But after knight a6, I think white can go g4 anyway. And knight to b4, just king d1, stopping knight c2 check. Bishop g6, take it, hg, and now g5. And this end game, kind of typical for these structures as well. Black is very solid, but white does have the two bishops and maybe can hope to, you know, put on some pressure in the distant future. So those are just some, some lines off the top of my head. I believe the main move or the main setup is still bishop to e7, g4, bishop to g6, knight takes g6, hg, bishop to g2, probably g5. I believe this is still the main tabia where I lack chess understanding to say is white better or not. I'm normally a two bishop sympathizer. So I would not mind playing this position with white occasionally. And as for the theoretical debate, there has been this game Carlson so which continues something like um, castles, knight bd7, rook d1 and so on. Queen c7 which was too slow and after e4 white was better. But instead of queen c7 like a move like long castles. My computer gives egalité or even queen takes b3, thinks it's playable for black. But none of these things, you know, exhaust the game. The game keeps going and white does have two bishops, which is the big point of this knight h4. So I would say it remains a playable line. Not really, not necessarily leading to like an engine-like advantage, but that's hard to ask for um, from any line. And if it gives you good results, there's nothing wrong with it. So keep playing bishop g4, queen b3, or at least keep it in the repertoire, because like every line, it's good to be flexible and not to telegraph to your opponents what you will play against the Slav. So yeah, I'm not sure if I told you anything new there, 
Maybe I just don't know anything new in that line. I think it's a playable line for white, but also not giving black any nightmares. Both sides get very typical Slav positions, where I'm normally team white because white has the two bishops. All right. So let's do two more questions in this current iteration. As usual, I didn't check the time. So I hope it's gonna come out at around an hour, which is what we're going for here. Bill1226 is saying, Hi Jan, thank you for your patience and good humor in answering our opening questions. I trust our, op our endless questions won't drive you to dislike openings. Nah, I, I might start disliking openings, but not because of the questions. Because as they always say, there are no bad questions. There are only bad answers. I'm not sure I believe that. But Bill1226 certainly is not asking a bad question. I have been playing One Night of Three and the Rati much more frequently of late after being a 1D4 player for years. Yeah, that's a very typical evolution. I might get there myself one day. Or I sort of am there. I am playing a lot of One Night of Three. I don't play that much Knight of 3 d5 c4. Normally after Knight of 3 d5 I still go d4. But for many 1d4 players you feel like adding Knight of 3 and to a less extent c4 to the repertoire to avoid certain things. And Bill1226 is saying I like the opportunity to make my opponent uncomfortable with transpositions and often to keep more pieces on the board. Same here. The line that bothers me the most as white is the 1 Knight of 3 d5 c4 d4 reverse Benoni position. Same here. That's why normally I don't go knight of 3 d5 c4 because d4 I've always had a healthy respect for. I've been employing 3 b4 but would appreciate your opinion on the th of the theoretical health of these lines for white. I've tried knight of 3 d5 e3 to discourage the d5 d4 push but I'm not sure that this is a better answer. Any thoughts on why, what might be the most promising tries for white in the Reti reversed Benoni? Thanks. I have some thoughts, so let's put up the board. In general, my usual approach with white, which I've been talking about at most questions, is that it's very hard to get an objective opening advantage in any mainline, really. And therefore, it's more about making our opponents uncomfortable. And if you see someone has had like 18 games with d5, c4, d4 and has good results after b4, f6 or whatever, then maybe that's not the guy where you want to play one knight of three, d5, c4, but maybe knight of three, d5, d4 is more awkward for him. Or you can start with one c4, try to catch him out of book there. Or, you know, there's a line after one d4 you might like. So in general, those are more the things I'm looking for than let's try to find an objective advantage Anywhere really, because I have a hard time finding those. So, first of all, you mentioned move order with 2e3. People have been doing that recently for exactly that reason, to avoid the d4 push. The big drawback to e3s is that black can play e6 here. And even though there's a bit of a trend to yeah, start investigating such, such positions with b3, bishop b2, I've, well, I'm not fully there yet to consider this a serious weapon for white, even though I haven't spent much time. Um, maybe one day I will get them. Another drawback is, of course, that if after c6 you want to play a system with g3, that no longer is possible after e3. So 2c4 would be great if not for d4. dc4 also an underrated move, by the way. dc4, e3, bishop e6. Not a bad system, um, as far as I know. But d4 has always been the main argument. One of the very few lines out there where um, black manages to grab space in the center. So I'm with you. I've always shied away from this position. But the good news is after 3b4, the positions are quite fun to analyze. And I believe these are positions that really favor the better prepared player. So even if we don't you know, find an objective advantage in all the lines, which, as I've said, is impossible. In most lines, those are still fun position tools to play and I'm not sure they should make you abandon the ratey approach in general because here, yeah, as I've said, especially if your opponent does not feel like he's booked up to the eyeballs. 
These are not bad lines. So black has a couple tries here, g6, g5. Looks a bit silly, but um, it's not ridiculous. Is that this trick? I like this trick, but probably your opponents won't fall for it. Um, anyway, those moves one does not have to be too afraid of. C5 is also a move, but you have to be willing to play the Benko or the Blumenfeld to tempo down, which is not everybody's cup of tea. C5, E3 or whatnot. So, to my mind, the main line has always been... Ah, I forgot to mention bishop g4. Bishop g4 is also a serious move. But once again, after queen b3. I sort of believe that white at least gets a decent position. So the big battleground that I've normally shied away from is the one after f6. Very principal move, just trying to get go e5. Occupy the center, hit b4, all the good stuff. And in order to get anything, actually, yeah, you could argue not to be worse, even though... Some people have had some success with knight a3, knight c2 here recently. But to my mind, in order to get anything, you have to enter this jungle, which is a mess. Um, and yeah, I haven't done that much work on this. But it seems like after a5 recently with queen a4 check, white has been, I'm not sure if he's been getting great positions, but has been asking some questions at the very least. There is this book by Adrien Demut, young French grandmaster, which I haven't studied in detail, but it did um, make a good impression, and I think it covers this stuff. So you might want to look into that book after c5, a5, queen, a4 check. There is always this trick we can hope for with, how does this go? Mm. Bishop d7, b5, bishop takes c5, bishop c4. And Vichy blundered a piece here. Was it bishop g4? I think it was bishop g4. Bishop g8, rook g8, queen to c4. So, there's upside. Theoretically, what do they do? I think they play knight e7, and it becomes a mess. e takes d, e takes d, bishop a3. You know, white doesn't seem to be worse, so computer-wise all these lines are more or less playable. And they will favor the better prepared player because these positions are so messy. So I think you can play them, but you have to do some work on all of this crazy stuff. Because here, yeah, bishop d7 is not the only move. Queen d7 exists, c6 exists. I don't know, does knight c6 exist? Knight c6 is probably more shady, right? Here, here. knight d5. Now ed or queen c2. So yeah, it's a total mess. And it's a position that, where well, yeah. That are sort of hard to play on field, unless you're Richard Rapport and you have a great feel for total messes in general. But I do think that they will favor the better prepared player. And if you specialize in this stuff, you often will be the better prepared player. Therefore, I'm with you. I've shied away from going for this against people that are comfortable playing d4. But I am coming around to thinking, well, it's not easy to get an advantage in the Slav or any of the other d4 mainlines anyway. So might as well do some work on these positions and try to catch people a little off guard. Theoretical health, I believe, exists. It's not that white is winning, as I keep saying, but white doesn't seem to be worse and it's messy and fun. So yeah, not a bad topic to spend some time on. I might spend some more time on it myself one day or another. I hope, yeah, that gave you an overview. Disclaimer. I have not yet spent a lot of time in this whole business. My my hunch would be that black equalizes with correct play in a couple lines, but no more than that, which is normally, yeah, acceptable. At least we can ask some questions. Of course, you gotta be ready to play messy positions, if not just avoid opponents that will do stuff like that. Because here I've I've had this position. I've chickened out with g3. Bishop g2, castles, knight of 6, d3, stuff like this. But it's not very inspiring when it comes to fighting for an opening advantage. a5, e3, d, e equalizes. Bishop d6, I believe, is fine as well. So yeah, not much here. Therefore, sort of gotta enter this b4 jungle once you get there. All right, best of luck, um, Mr. Bill1226. And that brings us to our old... Foil, Professor Moriarty. 
He's saying, hi Jan, my question is, what is the best move for white after knight f3, d5, d4, e6, c4, a6? I recently faced this in a tournament game that continued for g3. My guess is for g3 is what black's hoping for with that move, I don't know. g3, dc, bishop g2, b5, knight e5, c6, knight c6, queen b6, and here I think black has equalized. The best line is knight b8, rook b8, castles, bishop b7. Yup, agree. I prefer to play Catalan position, but I did wonder whether c for cd5 might have been a good idea. f 3 a6 may not be as useful in a Carlsbad pawn structure. What do you think? And generally, I'm with you. Oh, sorry, this is still the old line. And yeah, there is a bit of a trend around this a6 line and also its close cousin. Knight f6, knight c3, a6, they have become reasonably playable mainlines recently. So, knight c3, a6, I don't really trust here. It feels like it's a bit much. But knight f3, a6, doesn't seem like there is a refutation. When it comes to the best move, yeah, I always thought the critical move is the one you're mentioning, cd5, ed5, knight to c3, when black doesn't seem to have anything better than knight to f6. Some people experiment with c6 here, but then e4, d, e, knight, g5. It's very dangerous. Like, I think Paco has played this twice, and maybe he thinks it's defense defendable, but it does not look like great fun. <clears throat> Stuff like this, bishop c4, tending bishop g5, queen h5, so you probably have to go knight h6 here, here, d5. I guess white is a little better. <clears throat> so that's not a line that concerns us. But after knight f6, now we get this position that you can also get via the other move order that I just mentioned. White plays bishop g5. And yeah, it's not, there's no easy path to an advantage here after bishop e6, e3, knight bd7. You could argue that a6 is not the most useful move in the world, but normally black also doesn't get the setup with the bishop on e6 and the knight on d7. So I would guess that objectively these things are still slightly, slightly better for white. But a lot of top players have been willing to play those positions with the black pieces recently, which shows you that things are not easy and I haven't seen any real refutation. So a6 seems to be a serious move. If you generally prefer Catalan structures to over Karlsbad structures, then maybe you can look into... There's no what I telling you to look into, this is the line you mentioned, just for completeness, dc, bishop g2, b5, what was it, knight e5 here, c6, knight c6, queen b6, which, yeah, I agree, is equal. <clears throat> of course, nowadays computers will always say you can play b3 in any position here and have some sort of compensation, but I'm not sure this is the greatest spot to do it, so I'm not advocating that. What I was going to say is that maybe instead of g3, you can look into the move for knight bd2, which has recently been played by Wesley So. And I guess the idea is very simple to just fianchetto the bishop and meet d takes c4 with knight takes c4. Now, of course, knight bd2 has a certain set of drawbacks itself that once the knight commits to d2, black plans with c5 become a little more effective because the knight normally would like to be on c3 for these whatever we want to call them, Tarash adjacent structures. But it's not the end of the world either. And after c5, do you play g3 here? Mm -hmm. I can't recall, maybe it was g3 here. At least, you know, it's sort of a freshish position. Or maybe it was knight f6, g3, c5, bishop g2, I guess that was it. Which here yeah, does seem like a serious alternative to cd5. So in general, I still feel that cd5, ed, knight c3, knight f6, bishop g5 should be the best way to meet this line. But it's not a slam dunk and it won't catch any black player by surprise. Therefore, maybe looking into knight b2 is worth. Bishop g5 is also a move, but then I feel like bishop e7 is very solid for black. This is a famous. Um, hammer against Carlson game where white was better after f6 bishop d2 but bishop e7 it's not it's not that threat so yeah I do think cd5 is the best move if 
you want an alternative knight bd2 tending to play with g3 might be worth spending some more time on that is it for today's episode of the opening clinic i hope we all learned something i certainly did I should probably keep this a secret but one big reason i'm doing these opening clinics is i actually learned something looking at your questions there are a lot of thoughtful questions and i don't have the answers to all of them but they make me think about stuff that maybe i hadn't considered and by thinking about i mean putting it into my computer and pressing the button so thanks for contributing i hope yeah that it's been edu educational is that the word and see you guys in the next episode until then bye